Hey Nerdy Knitters, welcome to our dishcloth series for beginner knitters. In this three-part series, we're going to focus on three different dishcloths that will teach you all of the basics you need for learning how to knit. The first one in our series is this dishcloth right here. This is garter stitch. You'll learn how to cast on, how to knit, and how to bind off in this really stretchy, durable fabric. If you want to jump to any point in the video, be sure to use the timestamp links in the video description box down below. In this first video about dishcloths for beginner knitters, we're going to work on this dishcloth right here. This is called our garter stitch dishcloth. You'll need the pattern and some yarn. This is the kind I used right here. You can get it at any big box store or if you prefer to shop online. I really like this brand for dishcloths. It's nice and soft, but it's still very durable. So you'll need yarn. You'll need knitting needles, US size seven, four and a half millimeter, something to cut your yarn, and a tapestry needle to weave in the ends. First, let's take a quick look at our pattern. Most patterns include the same basic things. You'll find the finished measurements. This pattern is for three different dishcloths, so there's three different finished measurements here. The materials you need, which I just showed the yarn, the needles, the tapestry needle. Down here we have the gauge information. Now this is not so important for a dishcloth, but if you're knitting a sweater and you want it to be the same size as the sample that was knit by the designer, you'll really want to focus on this information. I'll have another video about gauge. Patterns also include abbreviations because if nothing was abbreviated, the patterns would be super long. So it's very common for patterns to have abbreviations throughout. Let's look at our instructions for this one. It's right here, it's very short because it's very basic. Our first instruction says CO30STS. That's our first abbreviation. CO stands for cast on, and then it tells us how many stitches to cast on. STS is our abbreviation for stitches. So you wanna cast on 30 stitches. So with your cotton yarn, you'll start by making a slip knot. You can use your favorite method or try it in the way I'm going to show you here. Hold it between your thumb and first finger. Wrap it around your first two fingers. Hold it right there again. And now bring it up and around, but underneath that first wrap. Take your needle up between the two and bring that second wrap right through. You can drop your yarn at this point and just pull and that will make your slip knot, which counts as your first cast on stitch. We're gonna use the knit cast on today, which is very similar to the knit stitch. So we have our first stitch, this slip knot counts as our first. We insert our right needle right underneath our left into that stitch and take the yarn, not the tail, but the yarn coming from your ball of yarn. It's underneath. We're going to bring it up and around that right needle just like that to the left pull it through and then hold your two needles parallel and you want to put this new stitch on your left needle so you bring your left needle around and just drop it on there just like that tighten it up now you have two stitches on your needle so you insert Bring that yarn up to the right and over and to the left. Pull it through. Put it on your left needle. And now there are three stitches cast on. Insert. Not the tail. Grab your yarn. Oop, my tail's in the way. up and around, pull it through, put it on the left needle. So you're gonna follow your pattern, cast on 30 stitches. I'm just gonna cast on a few more here, then we'll move on to the next step. All right, once you have your 30 stitches cast on, it's time to start knitting. And the knit stitch is very similar to the cast on we just performed. You insert your right needle into that first stitch on the left needle. Bring the yarn from underneath 
to the right and up and over your needle. Draw it through. But this time, you're not going to move it to your left needle. You're going to drop that other stitch off the left needle and keep it your new stitch on your right. Let's do that again. Insert into that first stitch. Bring our yarn up from underneath to the left. Draw it through. Oh, I dropped it. Let's try that again. Draw it through and drop the left stitch off the needle. Okay, let's do that again. Insert right needle into the stitch on the left. Bring the yarn up and around. Draw it through and drop that stitch off the left needle. There is your knit stitch. This is the foundation for most of your knitting. The purl stitch is the other stitch you'll need and you can do anything you want with knitting once you know those two stitches. They are the foundation for everything that you'll do. So you'll continue doing this across the row of cast on stitches. Drop that last one off. You turn your work and you switch things around. Now your empty needle is in your right hand. Your work is in your left. And you can start knitting across this row. But the first thing I want you to pay attention to is your, your yarn. It should be right here. Keep the tail out of the way. Don't pull it up and over your needle before you start knitting. Take it down and to the back. Pulling it up and over pulls that stitch up which you're tempted to do because that stitch might be loose, but that's not the proper way to do that. You take your yarn, bring it down into the back, insert, wrap your yarn up and around, pull it through, and drop it off. Insert, wrap and pull it through, drop it off. Here, continue across this row. Last few stitches, turn your work. And we swap things around. Put our work in our left hand, empty needle in our right. Working yarn is right here, down into the back. We've done two rows of knitting. So now's a good time to stop. Make sure you have 30 stitches like the dishcloth pattern says. I don't have that amount, I'm just doing a smaller sample. And the next thing to think about, once you start getting used to the knit stitch, is how you hold the yarn. Right now, we've just been dropping it while we work each stitch. But it's very common to hold the yarn in your hand. You can hold it just like that. Just grip it between your fingers and use your finger to bring it up and around. but it's still pretty loose. So another thing to do is to turn your hand and catch some of the yarn that way. And that helps provide a little tension on your yarn so it's not really loose and floppy. So all of your stitches maintain the same size. You can practice holding like that. Or if you're more comfortable, you can put the yarn in your left hand I like to wrap it around my pinky. I end up using this finger, or you can use this finger, to wrap the yarn around. You want to practice using your right hand or your left, whichever one is more comfortable for you. Knitting takes both hands to, you, to work the stitches, so it's not a right-handed activity or a left-handed activity. You need a needle in each hand and the yarn you can hold in whichever hand is easiest for you. So you just want to practice. Maybe practice with the, your right hand for this dishcloth and with your left hand for the other. The yarn is still traveling the same way. It's underneath and it's coming up and around just like that. Up and around. There, we finished a row. So now all of the work is in the needle on our right. 
So we turn things around, put our needle in our right hand, our empty one, the work in our left, make sure our working yarn is down here into the back. So I'll swat, switch to my left hand this time. It's the same movement, insert into that stitch, bring the yarn up and around. Doesn't matter which hand is holding the yarn, you're still bringing it up and over the needle from right to left. Think of your needle as a clock and you're taking your yarn counterclockwise around the clock, up and around like that. So we insert up and around and draw it through. Doesn't matter which hand is holding the yarn, it's the same movement up and around that clock anti-clockwise, counter-clockwise, just like that. So practice holding the, hand, the yarn in one of your hands and work across the row. Finishing up another row, we turn our work. I forgot to read our last, next instruction. We cast on our stitches, the next thing it says to do, Knit every row, which we're doing, until there are 24 garter ridges or the piece measures 5.25 inches from the cast on edge. You can see there's a few abbreviations in there and you can find those in the abbreviation section. So keep knitting. I'm going to knit a few more rows and then we'll stop and we'll discuss what that garter ridge means. So work a few more rows and meet me back here. So our instruction says to knit every row until we have 24 garter ridges. A garter ridge is right here. You can stretch this apart and look. Each of these, this, these big bumpy lines is what we call a garter ridge. This fabric where we knit every row creates all of those bumps. And if you count each one, that, we count them as two rows of knitting. So when you start down at the bottom and count up, when you have 24 of those ridges, or if you prefer to measure, you can take your ruler and measure from your cast on edge, right from the edge down here, and measure until you have five and a quarter inches from that edge, and then you can bind off. So you'll continue working your dishcloth. You can see right here, I've got three garter ridges right there. You want to keep working until you have 24 of those. And then you're ready to follow the last instruction, which is right here. That means bind off. To bind off, you'll work the stitches as normal. Knit your first stitch. Knit the next one. And you'll stop right there. If we just pull out our needles, our work is just going to unravel. So to bind off, we'll take this first stitch we worked and bring it right up over the second stitch. So we take our left needle and come around to the front, insert it into the leg of that first stitch, just like that. And then move them to the edge. You're going to draw that one up and over, leaving that second stitch still on your needle. And you've bound off your first stitch. And you repeat that across the row to bind off every stitch. Knit another one. And you have two on your needle again. Insert into that first one, draw it up and over the second one. Now you have one stitch over there. And you keep doing that right across the row. Knit another stitch. You have two. Pull the first one up and over the second. You have one. There, so after you finish knitting until you have 24 ridges, you'll bind off all of your stitches. I'm almost at the end of my bind off row. Now don't forget, this is just the very first of three videos in the dishcloth series. I have two more videos that will walk you through how to do the purl stitch 
and how to do some basic increases and decreases and create these two dishcloths right here. Here, binding off is almost finished. Our last two stitches, nothing left on this needle. Draw it up and over. Now we have one stitch left. You'll take your scissors, cut your yarn, and all you need to do is pull that last stitch right up and through, just like that. And you bound off all your stitches. And once you bind off, you'll have your finished garter stitch dishcloth. And all you need to do is weave in your ends. And if you want to make these other two dishcloths, make sure you get the pattern and check out the other videos I've linked. And be sure to subscribe if you like to get nerdy with your knitting.